All right, another week, another UND football matchup this week, and it's the Potato Bowl this time around. And after putting up a 55 spot on Drake last week, UND now moves to Northern Arizona. And Tom, um, you know, going into that Drake game, I think we talked a little bit about how, you know, last time out, it, the the score was a little bit deceiving against Drake just because of, of turnover issues and everything like that. This time, um, you know, maybe a little bit of a shaky first half just in terms of, like, you know, like everybody mentioned, not necessarily dominating, but then uh, that second half uh, kind of put those uh, doubts to bed. Yeah, you know, it uh... – the first half was just a little strange. Um, you know, I think you and you will point out they only had four offensive possessions. Uh, one ended with a missed field goal and another ended with a, a strip sack right there before halftime in the red zone. And I think maybe it's just the the strip sack right before the the halftime there that kind of left everybody's taste in their mouth kind of bad at halftime. I walked through the I walked through the Alaris Center crowd a little bit to try to visit with my kids at halftime and uh everybody was not happy. So, uh, you know, I'm sure there was a completely different tune after the game. Um, but, uh, you know, I, there were some takeaways to be had, but generally speaking, I think, um, I think it's going to be a lot more informative to see UND play Northern Arizona now than, than it was to play Drake. It is, uh, you know, with the de- it was the defense particularly sharp, even though they only gave up one touchdown and it was kind of in garbage time on a, on a fourth down. Um, I don't know. I'm not quite ready to say that. I, I'd like to see it play Northern Arizona here before uh, before we draw any real conclusions. Right. Yeah. And speaking of defense, too, uh, different look for Northern Arizona under center this time around. Um, you know, how much of an impact do you think that's going to have just with preparation when it comes to maybe overthinking things? You know, is there going to be more of a running presence from from Northern Arizona or is it, you know, are they still going to look to to push the ball downfield a little bit just to get some uh, some reps, you know, w- with a new quarterback under center? Yeah, I, I think it'll change the game completely just because R.J. Martinez was a very dynamic quarterback for Northern Arizona who who made a lot of plays on his own. He, he, he was a really talented kid, uh, transferred to Baylor here in the offseason. Um, but Kai Milner played at Cal for a reason, um, you know, and anybody who plays at Cal had to have been – you know, highly thought about a high school. I think he's an in-state kid there in Arizona who transfers back home. And I think they have some high hopes for him and Flagstaff. Um, to me, he looks like maybe he's, I would say he's mobile, but he's not a runner. Um, you'd probably say that about Tommy Schuster too, you know, mobile, but not a runner. Um, I, I think at Arizona, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that um, they ran it heavy to protect him a little bit. Um I, I thought Northern Arizona ran it, what, 41 times. Um, that's not the Northern Arizona we know, especially in a 38-3 game. Um, it, it felt like to me, either they are saying, hey, our identity is going to be running the football and we are going to run the football. Or they're saying, we're going to protect Kai Milner and we're not going to get him hurt in a game we think we're going to lose here. Um, I could see that going either way. So um, I think UND's defense is – Prepared to adapt quickly. I, I think, uh, you know, there's a possibility that Northern Arizona does come out and, and try to run the football with TJ McDaniel, the transfer from SMU, who's a big bodied guy, not that different than a Gavin Zebarth. I think they kind of look fairly similar um, on film. Um, so, you know, maybe they do like to get north and south with that kid. Um, but if you look at Northern Arizona's offensive line, they're not particularly big. I don't know if any of them go over 300 pounds. Um, that's very un Missouri Valley football conference like. And uh, I guess if Northern Arizona comes out and tries to run the football smash mouth a little bit, I guess we'll, we'll get to see if UND's um, addressing of that area of their defense, um, you know, has any positive returns here um, because that should be right up uh, a Jeff Griffin's alley, um, you know, in, in stopping the run here. Yeah. And then, you know, on the other side of the ball, um, you know, a lot of talk of, of you know, the defense and what was lacking last year, what can they do to, you know, beef up that run defense this year. Um, And then, you know, kind of flying under the radar a little bit, maybe, um, you know, Tommy Schuster comes in, you know, all preseason pick and, and obviously it's against a Drake team, but has a pretty, you know, sufficient and 
you know, successful day, 22 for 29. Um, you know, what, what, uh, what do you feel is, is the ceiling for a quarterback like Tommy Schuster? Yeah. And he's making me eat my words a little bit. You know, I thought we had seen his ceiling. I thought, you know, a quarterback who's maybe limited athletically, um, he, he does a lot of the right things, but he's still six foot tall. Um, you know, there, there, there were things that I thought that limited his ceiling. Um, I, I think last year he proved me wrong. He broke out. He extended plays with his feet. Um, not to say he, he's a, you know, a dual threat quarterback by any means, but he, he did establish that he can be a difficult sack to, um, obtain and his ability to extend plays, you know, created things for, for Bo Belquist and, and other guys. Um, you know, I think he's a heady quarterback, um, and I think the guys around him are what are going to take him to a next level. You know, um, the, he missed one throw that, that um, you know, hurt UND in the first half, but he only had, what, four incompletions for the whole game. So um, a, a strong start for, for Tommy Schuster. Um, I, I think it's the offensive line play that, that's going to determine whether or not he can elevate even higher. Um, does UND feel like it can drop back and allow him time to throw? Um because even against Drake, um, you know, Drake had the talented Finn Claypool kid at DN who who got loose around Seth Anderson there right before the end of the first half. And he's the one who got the strip sack. And and, um, you know, UND is going to have to show that they can trust those guys to, to drop back deep and, and let plays develop. So um, I think that's going to be the key. The next step to Tommy Schuster's development is an offensive line that can can protect a deep drop and let UND throw the ball deep. And then last week, uh, Luke Skokna doesn't dress or, or you know, doesn't play. And a and, um, couple other guys that come out maybe midway point through the game against Drake. But heading into the full week here, uh, what's the uh, injury outlook looking like for UND? Yeah, um, saw Luke Skokna practicing on Tuesday. Um, I would guess he's a – if I would have called him like a – I don't know – 10% he starts, 90% he sits against Drake. I think he's closer to 50-50 this week. Um, I think he could do it. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, that'll be one I'll watch pregame. The other two guys I'll watch pregame are wide receiver Caden Dennis, left that Drake game a little banged up. Um, a valuable weapon at the same time, that's a pretty deep position group where I got a lot of guys um, – a lot of guys can fill that spot. Uh, defensive end Casey Schultz would be the third guy that I'll be looking for pregame to see if he's to go. Um, if he doesn't go, that's a um, that's a pass rushing body that has built his way into relevance in UND's defense, and um, would be uh, would be unfortunate um, to to miss that depth as a pass rushing DN. But those are the three guys I'm looking for from UND's perspective, and then from Northern Arizona's perspective. Um, there's been some buzz about um, some wide receivers who who left the game against Arizona early. Um, so I'm waiting to waiting to count some heads there uh, during pregame warmups to see who's who's going. Gotcha. And last time out against Northern Arizona, you know, it took a couple of trick plays for UND, but uh, you know, this time around, what's uh, maybe your your prediction expectation for how this is going to go? Yeah, I think playing in Flagstaff is difficult. Um, just as it is difficult to play in Grand Forks. Um, UND plays well in the Alaris Center. I don't think teams travel well, play here well. Um, I think UND is in a, a little bit better place than they were a year ago. Um, maybe have some things figured out at cornerback that they didn't in that game. Um, offensive line, I think, is in a better place in, than that game. Maybe defensive line. Um, whereas I don't know what to expect from Northern Arizona. I wouldn't be surprised if their offensive playmakers surprise Grand Forks fans um, and they're explosive offensively. Um, I could see a 35-24 UND victory. Um, I would be surprised if Northern Arizona won. Um, I would also not be surprised if it was more like 35-14. I just, I, I don't know what Kai Milner can do at quarterback. Um, He's obviously got a lot of potential uh, that young and, and that, you know, little far removed from being a being a high end four star prospect. So um, curious, curious to see what Northern Arizona has. Um, but I, I would expect you indeed to win. All right. It'll be a 3 p.m. kickoff from the Alaris Center. It'll be on Midco Sports 2. 
also 96.1 FM, and also streaming on ESPN+. Plus. And you can also follow along with the Herald and with Tom with our live box score as well, also with pregame and postgame coverage. So hopefully you'll stay up to date with that, and uh, we'll see you again next time around, Tom. Sounds good. We'll talk to you then.